talking just before the break about uh, the right to privacy. If, if there were uh, such, a, such a law where the celebrities might be able to stop things and intrusion and uh, things going to print, I'm thinking, what about politicians? Uh, George, one politician in particular leaps to mind has well, been we, the subject we, of a lot of... We can't let your program be the only program in the country, exactly. but not mentioning the CT words. I mean, Craig Thompson complained that, uh, that uh, a network, Channel 7, I think it was, yep. were hiding under his bathroom window, uh, trying to get shots of his pregnant wife in the shower. Which Seven denies. But... Uh, yeah, but all sorts of things flow from that, don't they? Privacy, um, politicians, etc., etc., mm. and what the media sees its role as being, the standards that they apply. I don't know. I mean, what, what, what do the rest of us think Richard, about Richard, do you think Craig Thompson's been dealt with poorly by the media? I don't know that Craig Thompson's been dealt with poorly by the media, but if that story is true about his wife, then I think his wife's being dealt with poorly by the media. Um, I think there is a different, um, a more rigorous requirement um, that politicians possibly have to expect. But having said that, I did think that the David Campbell one was, was excessive. Over the top. It's interesting that in England, um, one of the proposals that's been put to Leveson by the major media companies, I think, uh, with the exception of News International, of course, but uh, is to build into the future the new Press Complaints Commission or whatever it's going to be called, um, a mediating function that will, will handle both privacy complaints and libel complaints. So you have an option of going to the court and spending a fortune uh, and years later getting a result or hopefully getting a quick uh, remedy in front of the very body that regulates journalists. In the short time we've got left, I, I want to look at some of the other things that you have uh, uh, touched on, recommended in, in, in your report, uh, Glenn Borum. Media ownership. Mm. Now, for many, many years we've had rules around media ownership, so there's not too much concentration, too few voices, as they're called, uh, in, in the media. Uh, you've recommended changes here, but just to cut to the chase, would the changes you're talking about allow, for example... Uh, Fairfax or News Limited to buy a TV network? Well, you know, whether that particular transaction would allow it to happen or not depends, but I think there's a clear so message. So it could, it could happen? No, I think there's a clear message that generally you don't want further, further concentration of the media in Australia. So you want to put some lines in the sand to avoid it getting any more concentrated. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of one company buying the other, but what is clear is the regulations that are there today are becoming ineffective. Um, one of the rules that is in place today is called the 75% reach rule for commercial television that says you, you can only reach 75% of Australia. Of course, in an era of catch-up television and websites, it's ineffective. Mm. It, it is irrelevant. If so a website can reach everybody, if surely... A, yeah. it, it not only reach 75, 100% of Australia, it can reach 100% of, of the world. So the world. these are rules that are no longer relevant. Mm. So what we've said is scrap a whole lot of black-letter law um, re reinvent the voices rule, which is currently called the four five rule, but now taking the national assets like national newspapers, mm. subscription television and websites, do that. And then, as was mentioned earlier, we have suggested, which is controversial, um, for, for mergers of national significance, put in a public interest test. Now, this public interest test, it sounds a bit vague. Yep. Who decides what's in the public interest when it comes to who should own the media? So what we've said that the new regulator, which is something we've not touched on, needs to be at arm's length to government, which is different to today. To today. So think the Reserve Bank of Australia, think of the ACCC. Mm. But it's still government appointed, isn't it? Uh, government appointed, but genuinely arm's length, the way a number of institutions in our, in our country are today. Does everybody think that's reasonable? Yes. 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 If, it, if it's as no. independent as no. the Reserve Bank I, is. I disagree entirely. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Let's have a little bit of specificity about our law rather than appoint great men to make decisions but for us. That's, that's, the, next, that's, the, next, that's the, the next people. That, that's but is the ABC a slave to the government? So, so you, have it, you, have, yeah, you have an independent regulator and then, you know, the, the public interest test has been criticised as being um, exceedingly vague. If it was exceedingly vague, I wouldn't support it. But the, the issue we've got today is that at a national level, you've got the ACCC mm. and all they look at is pure economic mm. market. So would this, would this body be able to then decide uh, someone like Gina Reinhart, Rupert Murdoch, whoever, 
because of some public interest test, they shouldn't be allowed to own a media asset? No, it's not about... It's, this is not about we don't like the person's point of right. view, we don't like what coast the It's person. all about concentration. It's, a, it's, about, it's about three things. It, does a merger reduce diversity? Mm. Um, does a, is the person who is... Re, the, the entity, do you think they'll comply with local regulations and those sorts of things? So it's not about <clears throat> whether we like the individual or not. It's about whether... What else they own. Yeah, so, so you know, to take it to the extreme, a merger could play, take place today within our existing regime that didn't reduce competitiveness but absolutely trash the services to a local John community. Roscoe, what's oh, wrong with I, I'd abolish all the ownership laws. The <laughs> argument about diversity won't stop two proprietors, two separate companies, having two newspapers or two TV channels of exactly the same view. And the other problem with uh, ownership laws is they are pawns of politicians. Certainly we want more diversity, but technology is getting that. A politician yeah, has right. never delivered diversity ever. Uh, th this, this argument, John, that te 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 technology... <laughs> exactly. But this <laughs> argument that technology has put more out there is actually not evidence-based. Mm -hmm. There is far mm -hmm. more information out on the internet than ever before. But if you go and look at how Australians access their news and media, exactly. they, they may do it But that's differently. because it's the best news and media. People choose that news and media. No one's forcing anyone to log on to a news site or a Fairfax but site or an ABC th site. This idea that, no one's forcing this anyone idea to that you can just drop all the diversity laws because the internet has made everything free just doesn't stack but people, up. Let people well, choose. It, it <laughs> does sound like there's a lot more that could be discussed and debated around this, and no doubt will be, but we are right out of time. Unfortunately, I want to thank all of you for taking part uh, in this, and uh, it's a fascinating area that uh, we're yet to see, as I said, the government's response to, but we're told that will be coming shortly, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for your company as well. I'm David Spears. See you next time.